TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K I C K dot com. That's what I stream on instead of Twitch nowadays. Uh, we are not live right now, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, this right here, if there's any highlights from the live, it'll be right up there. We also got the Patreon. Patreon, you know, where things you can't watch uh, on YouTube, we watch them on Patreon. Uh, and we also got the Discord, which plays a big role on Kick because you can't leave links in the chat anymore. Got to send them through Kick. Um, and we also got merch, new merch, new merch alert, new merch alert. All of this stuff can be found in the description below. It's in a link. It's called Linktree. So go down there, click that Linktree. All of my socials and everything will pop up. Everything you need to know. Um, follow me on Kick because we only watch we watch exclusive stuff on there that we don't watch anywhere else. Uh, and it's free. Uh, now this Liverpool Debt Collector. Oh man, I've been waiting for this. It came out two days ago. I had it saved and everything, but now I finally got some time to do it. Uh, yes, my camera is blurry every time. I don't understand what's going on with this camera all of a sudden. It's blurry like almost every other day. Every day. There we go. Come on now. Let's get in tune, stupid. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. I remember when I first watched this, his original documentary, or they had a doc on him before. Um, it was one of my most viewed videos ever. So, you know I had to... Check him out on a, uh, on, on, a, on a Anything Goes with Jame English joint. Oh, I already liked it. Told y'all. I was waiting. Anyway, let's get into it, though. Fix my camera. Oh, we good. We good. We good. Stay still. Stay still. Am I blurry or no? Ben Moran. Nice to meet you, James. Good to see you. Finally, after speaking for a year or two, yeah. The man, the myth, about. the legend, yeah. debt collector, Liverpool, in and out of prisons. Oh, Your oh. stuff's been viewed hundreds of millions of times. For the last five years since I've started this podcast, your name has always been at the forefront to have on. First and foremost, yeah, how are you? you? Thank you, it's good, it's good. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, they always promise you they'll do with you first anyway. You know, I don't know if she all want me mad, but I said the man, if you do it, we'll do it. And... It's, it's mad the way it's fell in here because I had me, uh, I had me honeymoon here because I was on license. I couldn't go out the country. So we picked Glasgow. So now I'm here this weekend. It's me other bit to go Monday. <laughs> so it's Hostess from Glasgow. <coughs> Sean is from Liverpool. These accents are about to be crazy. I got to concentrate for two and a half hours. It's all I like. fitted in really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all fitted in really good. Yeah. Like. So, yeah, it's all good. And shout out to Matt straight away. Good guy. Yeah, straight Matt's a good, good guy. Me. Yeah. That's a good guy. But before we get into everything, Sean, I always like to go back to the start of my guests. Get a bit yeah, of understanding course, course. about you, where you grew up and how it all began. Yeah, well, we was born in the Four Squared and Great Homer Street, and then we lived in Kirkdale, Kirkdale area. Um, it was like you got Kirkdale, Kirkdale, Anfield, Walton, you got all them areas, and they're all very compact. Um, Sean, Sean, G, you got to spit out the gum. You got to spit out the gum. I'm already having a hard time. <laughs> and I've got like four, uh, four brothers. My dad was a doorman, always worked all his life. My mum's always worked. We've all worked. My mum's worked all her life. And then... I got in with a few people, like, you know, I was always tired, I was always busy and I can't sit round. I'm just one of them people who just, I like to be doing something, you know. Slight ADHD. Uh, I wake up every morning, half four, quarter to five, got a little cup of tea and a little a yogurt or something. Um, anyway, um, I knew two guys, it was like, like how gangster guys, he was like, look, I hate that word, fucking gangster. And even getting called UK's scariest debt collector, it's fucking pathetic. <laughs> it should have been, when we was doing it, it should have been the UK mediator. Got a mediator between everyone. I'm getting... You know, goddamn mediator. He was out there collecting debts with authority. 
You know what I'm saying? Embrace it, my boy. Call it. It's caused me problems. People go, oh, would you think you're... I'm like, mate, look. I know what you're trying to explain to people when people go, why do you think you're the fucking R.K.? So I would go, you're a fucking R.K., mate, yeah, why? So it touched your head in a little bit. So anyway, I've met these two guys. Uh, I knew a guy who had a, a club and that. And we thought I could have a little go on. It was a bit handy and a little bit cheeky. And he had pubs paid me protection on the road. Um, okay. Do you want to come on a few debts with us? You know, you can have a little go and all that. I went to... Uh, yeah, yeah, what have I got to do? I've got to do nothing. We're going to knock on the door. I remember if it's going tits up. If it goes off, it goes off. If we get enough and we go, you know what? Be lucky at each other. You're going to be standing behind us too. Let's go and have a cu cup of tea. We're going to stand aside. You're going to run in and try and clump and put them out. So, how old are you going to be? I'm like fucking... That ain't mediating. <laughs> 16 then, you know what I mean? He went, does age matter? It's a body, arms, legs, all all right. Anyway, I've started doing a debt with them, started to get a better name for myself. Yeah. Uh, and then doors come up. You fancy doing a bit of security? Because look, in life, it's easy to hurt someone. In life, it's hard to, to protect yourself and protect other people. Anyone can get hurt. I can go out of here now, there can be three or four fellas smash me fucking head in. It can happen in your flat. People come in and do it. You protect yourself and probably protect it. It costs money and you've got to have good people around you. That's and true. I was, um, I just think you were fucked then. So, you know, people want your services. Show them, will you do this door? Will you do that? Hey, will you go and see him? Will you go and collect this? And the two guys I was working with doing that, they was a lot older. Uh, one had just took, one had come out doing life. He'd done life. Uh, and then he got another nine years for taking a fella's eye out on a bus, a yeah. bus stop. Yeah. Uh, so he took his eye out. Then when he's gone in, I'm left with this other guy to do the debt see. And I just changed the whole perspective of doing debts. But look, why are we doing this? Why don't we do it this way? Um, he was always taking pictures of them, getting up where they live. So we become good at it. And I thought, well, why am I doing it with them? I might as well fucking do it myself. I get all of them. I've got all the lads. They're getting a bit older. I'm a bit younger. You take over everything, don't they? We all get old, mate. We all crumble. I uh, started to do my own debts. My name started getting out there. Um, I had a couple of pubs on my own road, which the Oak, which we are still at, even when I come out of jail, they're all wrong. Natalie. Um, I thought, yeah, this, 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 this is good. This is all right. Then I started on a scaffold, because I'm a scaffolder by trade. Okay. Uh, so I was doing a scaffolding. Debts. Running the bar. I never drank. I didn't. You ask anyone, and any doorman out there will tell you, no one's ever seen me thinking of smoking until I was 38. Why not? Till you was 38? You see me thinking of smoking until I was 38. Till you was 38. You got to be on your P's and Q's, man. You don't want to be out there collecting debts and then somebody run across you when you drunk and beat your ass. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. What? That's the reason I wouldn't. <sighs> You, you, you know what, I was, I know it sounds man mate, I was that fucking busy. And they had lads around me. And I was on me toes all the time. And, See? You know, I wore a bulletproof vest for fucking there two and a half years. Because I'll, I'll get into that, a loads of trouble we had. So because they had lads and, look, don't forget, I was only a young kid. So no one's going to give me doors. So when a pub had a problem or a door had a problem, I'd just go in and see them. And they'd be like, really? I'd be, give me a chance. You need to own here. You've got fucking problems. And I'll go in and then I'll be hitting a few and I'm, I'm falling out with heads and people every year. But I'm one of, look, I'm no fucking Johnny Concrete, me, mate. But I'll stand up for what I believe in. I've got a fucking big heart. Stand for something or you'll fall for anything. So I'm like fucking 17, 18, knocking grown men out. And then me dad turning around and saying to me, have you been a fucking bar, such a bar? My fucking mate was on there, I know him. And I've been knocking these older guys out. So it just, it just grew them fast. So because it was always busy and I only took, people only give me the shit. I couldn't get a good tour. They'd only give me the shit. So I couldn't afford to be having a bit. No one's ever seen me. I'd like anyone to say they've seen me around Liverpool, bladdered, off me head drinking. Never, never, mate. And I've, I, 
No one's ever seen me that. I do to call me Father Ted on the clubs. <laughs> I'd like anybody around Chicago to tell me that they've ever seen me drunk or off me head. It'll be a long list. <laughs> hey. Hey, I used to get up. I used to turn up, but at the same time, I wasn't like liquid courage. I already had this courage sober. So, you know what I'm saying? I was the same sober or not. With these hands, at least, if, if it came down to it. Not that I condone that or anything, YouTube. Violence is not the answer. <laughs> Honestly, you call me Father Ted. <laughs> um, so I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. It was doors, doors, deaths, deaths, scaffolding, scaffolding. Busy, busy, busy. I was, look at my family, man. I've got five girls down there. What was it like? What were you like at school? Did you always have that size, that presence? <laughs> oh, I was a little fucker. Where do you? So school. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck old James then, Sean. <laughs> school, so we move from Great Overstreet and we go to Lambeth Road, school. And I'm still in touch with a, a good few lads from Lambeth Road. Chris Murphy is one of me real good long time mates. Box for England, everything, great fella. Yeah. So we'll land in this Lambeth Road, this Lambeth Road school. I wonder if he's going to answer that question. I wonder if, uh, 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 James is gonna ask the question about that bodybuilder. You still cool with him after you slapped him and a million people seen it? <laughs> you done whooped him? I don't know if he, I can't remember if he slapped him or what, but he did something to him on national television. It wasn't on national television, but millions of people seen it. I know at least from my channel alone, 600,000 people seen it. This video has 600,000 views and I was so sad when that happened that I had to delete it, but whatever. It's back up, I think, but... 1,100 kids in here. I'm only... How old are you when you go see? 12, 11, 12, something like that. And my brother's in a bigger year. So I've landed in the school. My fucking hell. You know, you don't need a kid, are you? And the fucking school was massive. So I got on with the gym teacher and the friend teacher. All the others that just didn't get on with. I'm, I'm not a sheep, I'm a shepherd. I ain't getting told what to do. If it's going to be constructive and it can get me further in life, yeah, it will, but I didn't see education then as being that. I'm fucking taking me, mate. I have people typing for me, and, and, but I'm good organising things and, you know. I was too smart for school. <laughs> I was too smart in there. I couldn't, man, I couldn't. I mean, I did, but, you know, I hope my daughter is better than me. She's also a girl, so, you know, they're ten times smarter than us. And I'm already a pretty smart individual, I'd like to think. Um, so, you know. Um, so anyway, I've gone to school, and it's all good. Everyone has their else caps in the fights. So, there's the school. Here's me house, there's one field. We had a mobile shop and another shop. I'd walk over every morning at 20 past nine. I'd be late every morning. I could get in my, in my, wind, in, in my, in my house, There'd be an M10 or M9 and I'd shoot an air rifle at the windows, pinging the kids in the school. That, I'm coming in now. I could actually hit the school windows with this air rifle. Anyway, I was late all the time. So one day, when it all changed, school, school, you're all fighting and doing your own thing. So we're in the, um, in the hall before you go in and it's like terms closing. And he went, oh, we've got an award here that we've never given out before in the DST of the school. Like. I'm not, I'm not taking no notice. I've got me wet job, me drain pipe, me ox. I'm thinking I'm fucking dead smart. Yeah. And can we have Sean Smith up? And they've all gone, oh, I've gone, oh, can I'm getting something here. Yeah. <laughs> I was like all made up. Now there's 1,100 kids in that school, it's fucking massive. We have, we have an award, the school's never given out before, blah, blah, blah. Can we have them up at the stage? So I've walked down. I'm in the second year now. I've walked down from the water school and they had a wooden clock with 20 past nine on it. And they went, we're going to give this to Sean. You all see him every morning, walking across the field, coming in, like he hasn't got a care in the world, and we're going to give him this award. Well, fucking play that. They made the come time we have it in front of the school. Went, Hopefully next year, he'll see a little bit of sense and we can get him up here and give him another clock and have him in flat past eight, quarter to nine, like everyone else. This is on the assembly. And I thought, you fucking, I just felt a gun. 
<laughs> you fucking cheeky bastards. All me mates, you know I'm a little... The school did that? That's bogus. I ain't gonna lie. Somebody in the school thought that was funny like an adult. What did, what did they expect after that? Scally and me brothers in, uh, uh, all the year. And uh, I just went on full hate for the school. So that year's finished. We go back. I'm still not going in early. Um, so I got expelled three times. Bought the governors a couple of times. So years ago, when they give you the cane, they can't put the... They're not supposed to put their hand over their head. And people know there was a teacher called Mr. Hodgson, Mr. Whitby, and Mr. Patterson. Mr. Whitby was the deputy head, Mrs. Patterson was the head, Mr. Hodgson was, I think he was maths and English. Big, big cunt. I'm sure he was fucking Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Honest, I think he was. I'd like to just want to confirm that. Anyway, uh, I'm a little fucker, blah, blah, blah. So I'm always getting a cane, I'm always outside. Just, just being naughty, but I didn't want to do nothing now. I thought you made the come to me. I'm not out. Jim Cheetah, Mr. Jackson, fucking loved them. Mr. Hunter, the French CJ, loved them. Yeah. I, don't, I come top in French. I can't fucking, I can speak a couple of words, but I like them. So if I like someone, I'll, I'll bond with them. You know what? And he just had this, I thought he was just against me. So anyway, I'm getting the K one day off this, Mr. Ogdenson. He takes me down to Mr. Whippy and they give you 10 on your fingers. I might not give a fuck who you are, mate. Everyone gets these off the cane. You can't tame kids now. Should bring it back. Anyway, I'm getting ten. Five on each arm. So we took me in this room next to Mr. Whitby's office. Get your hand out, mate. So it's only me and him. I've had me bollock off the tip of the head. Mr. Ogden took me in this room. And he's giving me the cane. So his hand going, I'm like, I want to say, well, what are you doing? You know, he's fucking like this, Mr. Ogden. Anyway, he's giving me ten and I've gone, uh, fucking tea rolled down my eyes. And he went, I hope you've laid your lesson, boy. This will get hard. I've been expelled a couple of times. And I went, me, me, no, you can't breathe. You've got that stuff. <laughs> <as a kid." laughs> I've tried to be brave. I remember those days. You get that whooping. You can't really breathe. You hyperventilating. How many did you give me when? Ten. I went, no, you only give me eight. And I put my hand out, no, being cheeky. And he's just gone, fuck off. And whacked me arm. But I just seen this. I picked the chair up. I'm so not at the yeah. He's ran out, locked me in this M10, gets the headmaster, brings me down. My dad was on the fruit market, he's standing out of shop, he's worked all his life. My dad would go to work like one or two in the morning. I'm coming at one or two in the afternoon. So I thought, get me, man. Don't fucking bring me house, dad. Go on. No, I've mobile then. Don't get me dad. He fucking dad comes over with his sheepy on, cap on. I'm in this room. See him coming in, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so he speaks to me, dad, and he called me in. And he's dad standing there, staring at me with his cap on. This big sheepy on. If you see it now, he tell you, we laugh about it now. And he went, you're fucking kidding me. And this Mr. Pass went, Mr. Smith. I'm the headmaster, Mr. Whitby's deputy. You, I've been a, in the teaching fraternity for 40 something years and I have never ever felt like punching a pupil. <laughs> but you're so, <laughs> just for something to me in this school. I'm standing there. Hey, I was the same type of kid. I, I can see, I had a teacher call me the N word. This how bad I was. Like, she just felt like all my ancestors needed to be brought into it. Like, she, she was on my. Like, she called me that, and she couldn't even, she was, I was like, oh, I got you that flustered where you done brought 400 years of my past ancestral into this? That's crazy. I was one of them kids where teachers just wanted to call you, you know what I'm saying? Fucking hell, he went. I, I, I can't look at him. Take him out. And he's like, oh, I, don't worry about that. Never mind the cane. I'm just explaining the cane. So outside... It was a fucking big trophy cabinet. But everyone's trophies in it. No damn little cabinets where you can just tear it. And it's all glass. So my dad would get out there while I speak to him. What do you, do you want to expel me again? My dad say, no, leave him in. So I can hear him speaking to me. Dad. He's this, he's that, he's tolerant, he's the one, won't we do this? So I'm standing there. So I've opened the cabinet and pulled the shelves right on the edge. 
where they're just sitting on the prongs. I've just pulled the shelves down on the ends like that. And I've left the glass open there. It's a double cabinet, the glass open there. He went, OK, Mr. Pants, OK, I'll see them. You know, fucking get up, you. Come on, you know, fucking get carry on. As I turn around, he's giving me a clip the back of the head. And then I'm going, who'd be it? I could hear, I'm just going to, where the, where the, the headmaster thing was, here's the stairs. Who'd be with this cabinet? And I'm walking down. And just as you open the door, he's just there. <laughs> Fucking everything going, mate. Now Mr. Passes had gone to close the cabinet, trying to push it back and everything, full on glass. So I was fucking made up. I went home and I got a fucking bad hiding. A, a proper good hiding. Um, and I thought, I'll have to get my head down into school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had to do that. So, go back into school. I'm suspended for like, seven days for a week or something. I think it's a week. Go back into school. And I'm called up again in front of all the school. Just to let everyone know, you see Sean out. It's very long school, Lambert Road. It's like the biggest playground in the Northwest or something. And I'm always outside, them 10, them 9, or what's 3 I. Um, Sean's always out. Please, no one, because we used to have a little thing SRS on our hands, school riots, because. So I had a few little mates, so I was in Woodsway. I'd be cutting everyone's fucking work up. It metal weird, but I just, I just didn't want to be there. Do you know what I mean? I really just didn't want to be there. Um, so, so, to call me up and embarrass me. I thought, right, fuck it. So when Lambert Road School is a big stage, and we had a mobile, so all the papers that you don't sell, you send back. So I get up one morning and I just dread, I'm in third you know, just dreading going to fucking school. I said, I fucking, I know what. They call me up again to coming to the end of the year. I've sneaked in the school, caretakers are in, got in, got a load of papers, put them all under the stage, <clears throat> lit it. The stage is dead, I close the doors, comes out. What were you doing at the end of the year, isn't it? Assembly and all that. So all the teachers up, you can just see the smoke. You a pyromaniac? Like you were setting the stages on fire? Yeah, you was a minister to society. You was definitely a, a threat. <laughs> you was a threat to education back in the day. You know, come on out, and everyone's going, <laughs> no one look at that, I'm going, man, you're back on, go up. I didn't think when they opened the door, you just get a, <laughs> you get that, like, backdraft or something, don't you? Hey, anyway, like, no one panic, no one panic, if there's a bit of smoke, they've opened the door, you can, it wasn't a big, it was just like a little swoosh in the smoke. Anyway, all the alarms have gone off. They've got, they got everyone out in the yard. Five brigades are there. The police have called in. <laughs> they had me in sitting with the police, and I got fucked off for tears, yeah. And they had to go to. Hey, this is the best type of interview podcast for the pod, for like, for um, James, because he ain't got to talk. He ain't got to talk. Bro, been going for 20 minutes straight. Sean, I mean, uh, James only laughed once. <laughs> this is easy money in the bank. A, a private school in Pemberley. They wouldn't have me no more. They couldn't prove it. And years ago, you got a, you got a caution off the police. They wanted to just give me the caution. Yeah, and that's it, I've had enough. So I went to this private school, like for naughty kids. Fucking hell, mate, I thought I was naughty. These was oh. fucking ruthless. Gone in, first day. Fella had a mod bike with all the mirrors on, bit of a teacher, wearing a normal gear, no pants and shirt and all that. Right, young Smith, caught in trouble in your school. School can't reprimand you there. We can do what the fuck we want with you. And you want to learn the hard way, you'll get it every day. I went, what, what? I went to alternative oh, school too. I got it, give us a pencil, give us a book. I'm telling you, any of you, listen, you don't know what you'll get here. And some of the other kids go, yeah, whatever, give it to him, say and all like that. I was there three days, and all he ever went on, went on about was these fish in his fucking tank. He had all tropical fish. Mm. And I just didn't like him, little fat stocky fella, he was horrible. And he had that stupid fucking Vespa bike with all the mirrors on. <laughs> and he's giving me a hard time. So little Sid is what you used to get in school, you can put them in and I'll get them on the I'll tell you killed the fish. I've got in the yard. Started to smoke the bike and fucking drove it into school. All his mirrors coming off me, he was fucking murder. So, they get me, they get the police. 
I have my section caution deterred when you get prosecuted. I'm back in the school and he, I've come out of it. I've got it. got to chill out. You two strikes. In this other class. So we went over to a little shop, Blackie's over the road. I Chill. bought a load of sherbet. And anyone who's fish lovers, I was a naive kid. I filled the fish tank up with um, loads of sherbet. Pink, yellow, green. Sherbet. Ice cream? Sherbet? Killed all, his, killed all his fish. <laughs> Made it, that was it. <laughs> they just fucked me off. I had to have private tourists and she got fucked off. So. I'm 14, 15, I'm running the mobile for me dad. This private tutor's come, we fucked her off. My dad's got a shop. Um, and then I started. That was that. With the two older guys, doors, security. Uh, yeah. And it just grew. And then when I got like proper doors, when the breweries got to notice me, as in with my mate called Darren Langy, he started the, the doors with me. And you just got to shit, mate. He just give you shit. I was up in Speak, Canny Farm, Crocky, which no one would do. But I'm I'm a young kid, I'm doing my own bit of doors. I'm getting off for three pubs. Yeah, I'll take them. What can I make? Biggest mistake ever made. Were you buzzing through it? Was an adrenaline rush? Yeah, yeah. yeah but, there. And, and adrenaline rush. Doors. Go on to people's Look, doors. I'm one of these. If I've got a problem with you, and anyone will tell you, I'm not ringing up and doing all that shit on the phone. No one had mobiles then, when I was a kid. I think they come out maybe when I was 18. I, I don't know what the fucking year it was. So you'd have to go knock on someone's door. So if I had people kicking off in the bar and trying to smash That's me. crazy because I was around when, where there was, when cell phones wasn't that much of a thing. So when we was kids, you know, we had to actually go outside and ride our bikes to our friend's house to communicate with them. You know what I'm saying? We didn't speak to them after we left. We had to pull up. If there was a problem, we had to pull up. Phones gave you... Phones, just like the internet, gave you something to hide behind in reality. You know what I'm saying? Where is he? Did you wait for Sean Smith? You're a fucking divvy. I just... Who is he? Do you know where he is? Not on your normal phone. Knocking on doors. I go knock on the door. You hear me fucking bar kicking off last night in the club. I don't own the club, mate. You call on the door, my muppets are going to shoot them. And I'll shoot him my way for you. Well, I'm here. And everyone knew me as just one of them people. Have you had a problem with you? Don't ring, don't ring up or bring the bar or throw something through the bar or shoot the fucking bar. Come and see me. And then my name just went better and better. And then Darren left. They had another couple of good lads with me. I had Alex from over the water. He stayed with me. He was the best man for me wedding. Yeah, he'd been very loyal. I've had some good doormen. But look, when I was busy, when I was when I was busy, we were the second second biggest door company in Liverpool. Eighty odd lads, twenty odd women, clubs, bars, sites. It was just fucking mayhem, mate. Eighties, nineties was mayhem. How much of a sore head was it though, having so many doormen? Was it constant threats, or because your name was behind it, it wasn't as much? You know what? It, it you know people go on about mental health and all that shit. I used to have three phones. So one was for doors, one was for sites, and one was a person. Three fucking phones, mate. And I'm like, I had that many, but I had them not just in the city centre. I had them out the city centre. I had them in witness. I had, and I had one in Warrington then, even before I'd come to Warrington. So I was everywhere. I, look, I didn't want to have a drink and I didn't want to socialise, but I couldn't, because I just had shite. The doors he had was shite. And even when I started getting the big bars in Liverpool, oh, sure, we're having problems with these doors, we won't go and yeah, to charge an extra to putting buckets on. Will you come and see what you can do? And I'm not going to go down and start knocking doors on out. I'd just give it this. Lads, listen, you don't want you. Simple as that. I'm taking over the door. You're going to wait for me. You're going to get the same money, but you're not staying. And you're not staying. Why? Because you're a prick, mate. You're charging fucking next. You're putting buckets on the door. At Christmas, yeah, it was allowed. Fuck. Man, they need you in Chicago. Shoot. You'll take over the whole club scene, the whole door scene. You wouldn't like none of them because they all charge extra at the door. Every doorman. Every, you're not getting away. They, they don't really search you. That's why there's so many shootings in the clubs. Uh, uh, what else, man? They charge an extra for any little thing. Yeah. Come, come to the rack. But you're going to need, like, real, you know, 
It ain't that sweet. It ain't no fighting. It's, it's... Fucking weekends. You're taking a piss, mate. You're ruining the bar. And then your mates into an old craft. Ain't happening. And anyone will tell you that in Liverpool. Anyone. Some doors, some lads would say, well, if you fucking want it, let's have it. And I'd end up scrapping over to have a little scrap at the door. I'd say, Look, I've been done in a few times, mate, but never by one person. Never in my fucking life. And anyone will tell you that. Bye. And he ended up at the door, so the breweries get to know you. Oh, we've got problems in that one, given that. But I just got this shit, James, for years. And then when I got established, I was all right. Then we had a big war that started. Not letting drug dealers in the club. That was a fucking headache. Oh, because, yeah. what was it, late 80s, early 90s, all them tablets come out, ears of gold, and, mate, it was fucking mayhem. But when they're in, you, got, you didn't get problems, because everyone's off the head, dancing. When cocaine started in Liverpool, woof, that's when it started. Is that how you in, end up involved in a drug war, even though you weren't even selling craft? Because you weren't <sighs> wanting anybody to sell it? No, no. Most of me were, most, most of the troubles I had on the doors, I saw that with the doors. I had good doormen around me, real good doormen. Too many to mention. One, Paul Walsh, still me mate today. Look, I had 30, 40, 60, 70 doormen. I heard of him. I've probably got five of them to to speak to now. Bristol was brilliant. Walshy, fucking lunatic. He's my best mate now. Alex is my best mate. They all went. They're all standing here when I'm backing the trouble up. Once I've gone, they don't want to know. They just, they, they all wanted the money. And yeah, a lot of them did stand by me and a lot of them did help me. Some of them got jail. And I've lost track with a few of them. And I'd say out of all of them, I've probably got about six or seven of them. I'd still call two friends, even some of them I haven't spoke to for a few years. Um, and that's how all my shit started. Because I wouldn't let no drug dealers in, because that's what the brewery wanted us for. Sean, look, the license would come in and, and put it and book it in. The license, had the key, and the police had a key for drugs. If there's too many drugs in the box, you got a drug problem. If there's not enough drugs in the box, there's someone selling. So it's a very, very fine line. So the proper managed ones like Bass and all the breweries, all their managers were strict as fuck. No one to go in that box. The police have the key. The managers never go in. So they come in and get them to show on. I've got a drug pub. So I go in, <clears throat> got cameras now. So I'd have a couple of little spies and go around and see what you can buy. They go around, mate, you got five, you got ten, you got beak. It was mostly tablets. But when beak hit it, that's when you got your problems. Kids coming in, hiya mate, how are you? Two hours later, you're looking at that. I'll get your shot. I'll get your man's shot. And it just started from there, James. It just went mad. And I did have good dorm around me. And if if there was ever a problem, there's probably only me and another big security company in Liverpool. And he knows who he is, there's only one. And there's probably only me and him that would front all our trouble. If our lads was in trouble, I'd go and front it. And so with this other guy. And everyone knows he is. He hasn't done any diesel goals on that. He's a boss fella. I don't know who he is. Please tell the name. There's probably yours out of the door companies that were from people. And that's how I got good lads. Oh, fuck that, mate. If the shit at your house or if the shit goes to your house from the door, Sean will be there. I'll be sitting in my fucking doorman's house. The, Sean's not going to shoot me out. So I'll go and stay there. I'll go and park up and wait for them. So I was loyal. I am a loyal person. Anyone will fucking tell you that. I believe. Yeah. And then all the shit I had, which is well documented, and, um, you know, the Echo, Vice, uh, the YouTube. Vice, uh, that's the one. Netflix. That weren't my trouble, James. None of that trouble was mine. How far did that go, all that? Two years, two years plus. There was... Nothing to do with me. I'm running two big massive nightclubs in Liverpool. One of them, massive club. I'm running that. I comes home on Sunday. Uh, goes to bed, get, here's a commotion, all my windows are done in. Looks at a video, sees who it is, rings them. What's going on, mate? Fucking hell, you're coming, mate, pup. It's not you. Someone's that close to you. All right, I've rang this. Friend at the time, won't mention your name, but everyone will know who it is. What's going on? You went, oh, I had a bit of trouble last night. I said, well, don't you think you should fucking tell me? 
because I know you really well and I'm connected to you to come and fucking dump my house. Don't you think you should tell me? Ah, it'll be sorted. So I've rang this little firm and they had to want to straighten it with that person. And I don't want to say anything because he's embarrassed enough anyway. Um, and he wouldn't have a straightener. So because this guy was very close to me and connected to me, he wouldn't have a straightener. So we looks bad. We look bad. My firm looks bad. And these kids just didn't give a fuck, mate. They ran right with us. They were shooting at us, ramming the cars. They fuck weren't my body. But I had to take... I had to get the, the reins and I had... Sean saw that, Sean saw this, get lads for this. Sean, get lads for that. But when they're attacking your beard, he was fucking sitting there. What are you going to do? You're going to defend yourself. I said, look, this is not my fucking problem. But I took the brunt of it. End up going fucking mental, sleeping on me couch, wearing a vest, changing me cars, putting me cars down the corner, carrying a gun permanently all the time with me, a little derringer, putting it in the thing of your car, your eater, in me undies, in me briefcase. Yeah, it, James, it was fucking, it was mental, mate. It, it just went a life. And you know when you, a lot of people don't understand, you know when you get a bit of a temper, you get a bit red faced. My face. Oh. He was painfully fucking red and burning all the time. And it was... Anyway, I've had these three phones. One phone put down. Goes and sees the doctor. We're going to put you on Panadol, certainly. One's a beta block that wants to calm you down. Stressful. So he said, have you ever thought about seeing a psychiatrist? I'm like, oh, fuck off. Yeah. I wonder if he has PTSD now because of all of it that used to go on. Why do you go and see one? Here's a private one in Rodney Street. So where's where it gets funny? So I go to see this fella sitting on the street, third floor. Goes and sees this guy in a room like this. Sees this guy in his own face, called Peter. Right, Sean, how are you? Is there a garbage disposal in the back now? Jesus. What you do? I don't know. She called you come, you got a bit of problems all this and that. Yeah. Right, Sean, I can see you have three phones, so what, can you turn them all off now? No, no. See, well, that's one of your problems. I went, I know, I know, I know. So when I'm sitting, where he's got me, the door behind me, and I'm like, so what's up? I said, I don't like that fucking door being there. And on the wall, it's not like one of them alarms mm -hmm. on the wall. So I'm paying, it was like 35 quid to go then. So it's like four or five sessions with him, you need to come to turn him. Anyway, I've got rid of one phone, I've took an off and operators managed on to do the sites. I'm doing the doors. Give someone else the phone. Gets manned in the office and all that. Uh, and I've had about four or five goals with this guy. And I thought, I'm not getting nowhere. And he's telling me things that I should be telling myself. So it goes in one day and he's got this fella sitting here at the end of the desk. So you're there, who I speak to, and I won't do talks and it's sent them out but like four or five people are mental health it, 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 I'm, it's private but i'm saying it now anyway this fucking oh no, man it's too bright i think that's why i think that's why i keep going in and out like that maybe it's too bright fellas it oh, we don't have time There and his chair's like here. So I've come and gone, all right, Pete. I hey, Sean, this is a colleague of mine. This is, forget it, fucking, let's call him Tom. This is Tom, he's a friend of mine. I said, You all right? He went, Yeah. He said, You all right with me being here? He went, No, not really. I don't, I'm, mate, I don't fucking know you. I'm, 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 I'm it's, this is personal. Well, I'm not going to take no notice. I said, Why are you going to fucking turn your ears off or something? He said, no, I'm just, I'm just sitting here, it's over here. So I'm speaking to him and he went, I didn't know he was there to test me to push my buttons, right? Mm. He was going, you're doing well, but you get aerated a lot. So I'm looking at him and he's throwing things away. Sean, I've just got to tell you, he said, uh, I'm trained in submission holds and all that. I went, yeah, made up for you. 
<laughs> and I've literally gone, I said, yeah, mate, off you, mate. So I said, look, Peter, I'm not really happy with this. I want him to go here. Why do you feel intimidated by me when, look, I, I, I really don't want to be here. So I've turned my chair that way so I can see the door and this fucking gobshite's there. He went, well, why? He went, do you feel intimidated? I went, are you taking the fucking piss, mate? Does your bear tell you that? Do you intimidate your bear or something? He went, Sean, I've warned you. I went, you, sorry. <laughs> and he's going, now, Sean, I went, no, I'm gone, I'm gone. I'm, I'm talking to him now. You've warned me. I said, look, I'm going to leave. You, no, don't have to. I said, no, I'm going to leave. I want to go. I've stood up, grabbed the chair, thrown the twat at him with the chair, jumped on him because he's brought him in. So he's gone over and said, whoa, whoa, calm down. I said, you, you fucking cunt, set me up. I've jumped on him. He's in the buzzer. The alarm's going off in the room. <laughs> But man, I've come in. I've turned the latch so you can't open it. Because I don't want no one coming in. No one have latches you can turn. <laughs> so I've turned the fucking latch. I thought, he's going, no, Sean, turn your chair around. He's trying to get me, me back against the chair to relax me. Well, that way it worked. And I kept, oh yeah, and I kept turning it. So I thought, well, fuck you, you can't tell do that. Man, I'm coming, go, we all right, I'll turn and put it on. He's hitting the buzzer. The staff are running up to three days. He's screaming. <laughs> He's fucking mental. Get, get them in, get them in, get them in. He's going, Sean, you need... I said, calm down. You fucking set me. We're having all that submission talk. And he up he comes. He's fucking being pegging me. What do you want me to do? You know, when you lose the... Put that office chair in a chokehold, didn't you? <laughs> you can't choke that chair out when it's being thrown at you. That's tough. Mm -hmm. Plot of it, James. You lose the fucking plot. Yeah. And I went, ah, fuck. I'm biting at these people. There's a little window like that. Please open the door, open the door. He went, the police are coming, you need to. I went, listen, go and get the fucking police. I haven't hit you, I've turned you over this year. You've hit me with I went, I picked the chair up and I fell out my hands. Go and do what you want. I'm not fucking coming here no more. So I left to get in touch with my doctors. They say, go and see a mental health fella. And I wouldn't, but he had all this drama going on. Like, I'll pick the chair up and in between all this, James, there's all this fucking murder going on. That's got fuck all to do with me, mate. Nothing. And these people that started it just left us to fucking get on with it. And you know, sitting back, I think, you fucking cheeky bastards. Everyone in Liverpool just say to me, Sean, what are you doing? It's not your work. What are you doing? But. Bugger. Someone's attacking your beard and your fucking kids. It's fucking not happening. I'm defending them. Forget that now. They didn't fucking sort that shit out. They've dragged me in it. So I'm going to deal with it. Yeah. And I've made they chased me one night from the house. But you see what I'm saying? That's that that's that's a that's his look where loyalty will get you. He's loyal to these people. He's inherited their problems and then they just dipped. <laughs> Now they all his problems. Now he on. Now he's on the go. He has no peace in his mind. You know what I'm saying? And he had a Vector V6, and they're chasing me, and they're out to somebody shooting at me in the car. And as I'm coming down Green Drive, this is in like the people times or something. I'm coming down the drive, um, and as I'm coming up to lights, the bump from my car, not to push me through the lights. And I'm, I had a Vector V6. They had a Vector V6. Theirs must have been a bit fast. They could be bumping me. I was floored. It made something fucking floored. I thought, I'm going to fucking die here. And every, I remember I'm coming up to light and I can see, you no, know, the post office vans are out late of an eyes. This fucking hard tick's coming along and I'm going, fucking, do I slow? Oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking, oh, but I always carry rocks in my car. I have these pebbles with faces on. And I'm, I've opened my son from throwing them out to try and hit their window. Anyway, they've let a shot go. I've come round this corner down in Bootle. The cars, the, 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 back, the hatchbacks are empty. It flew up. And they put a shot right through the car. And I've, I've leaned forward and it's come through, through the back of the car, hit the door frame there, went on the engine mountain. This is what the police tell me after. Anyway, they've gone past me, went, next time you're fucking dead. And I've just gone, come on. These kids was lunatics. I'm just a dorm that can have a bit of a fight. I don't, I don't want, I don't fucking want it's not to do with me. You know who it is, but I've took it. Hey, listen, that's really how I be. Like, this has been a couple of doormen that I know, RIP, man. He lost his life, um, 
you know, just being a doorman, you know. Just being a doorman, people can't take, you know, being denied out the club or, or being kicked out because they're doing some funny stuff. You know what I'm saying? They come back, they letting it go because it's real. It's, Took it by the rain now, so I've got it's real lunatics at the club. It's real people who really, their mind is gone. It's real steppers. <clears throat> On the table and I'm going, I ah, fucking kill you. <laughs> so they're facing me in this car. Especially in the rack. And I know Liverpool is very, to me, I, 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 Liverpool and Chicago is like very similar to me. And I ain't never even been to Liverpool, but like the people are the same kind of. It's like those friendly people, but at the same time, it's like Chicago's people are very friendly. But at the same time, it could go, it could go left real quick. Don't take that friendless friendliness for like weakness type stuff, and I, I and I think Liverpool's the same way, and a lot of aspects, not just that. That's why I rock with Liverpool, man. Honorary scouts for life. You get me? He's <laughs> out the window. Yeah, you wanker. I'm like, fucking do or die. I've gone to drive the car. It's smoking. The front tire's gone down. The bonnet's flew up, and they drove off. That happened in the car, the tours. Is it really worth all this shit fighting with these kids? These kids was running right, and we didn't have a fucking clue. They was on the street crafting and everything. We had just fucking dormant. Um, and I went, what, 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 what? I can't get out of it. I wouldn't back down to no one in my life. And if any of these people seen out to tell you, Sean can have a go and he'll use them as well. So I had to start using them. They're shooting at my house, I'm shooting at their house. Uh, they're burning at mine, I'm burning theirs. We was going to the auctions for Thursday. Buying cheap cars for two and three hundred quid, just to ram people. We drive round of a night, me. Sean, damn near from Chicago. Like he sound like a, a, a Chicago person. <laughs> he said, "Man, I could throw these mugs, but listen, that ain't the game they playing. They they bussing. So what I'm supposed to do? I got a bus back too. That's exactly how I go in Chicago. That's why there there are no pedestrians. There are no what's the word I'm looking for? There are no Innocent, innocent for bystanders. What's the word? There are no um, civilians in Chicago. There are no civilians. The gangsters in Chicago and the people that, that are doing all the crimes made everybody have to be a stepper. Everybody own a pistol in Chicago. <laughs> Women, men, you know what I'm saying? Everybody. Because, you know, we got to defend ourselves. Ain't nobody fighting one-on-ones. <laughs> it's tough. Ian, a couple of the, the dorm children got not long got out of the big jail centers. Good lads. And uh, my little nephew, he was great. <clears throat> I would be driving around and you leave the heater off in your car. Close your window so you get that bit of steam so you can't see it. And we'd be driving around, bringing people. What car are they in? We'd see them and just ram them. Then just jump out and battle. And I thought, I'm getting fucking 30 something now. What am I doing? You get old. What the fuck am I doing? And then the ton of the, um, the kid across the road, the trouble in one of the venues. So I sent one of my good mates up at the time. So go and see if that kid's there. He went, he's here outside now. This bar we had. I went, get him. So we got him in the car and brought him down to the club where I was working. And um, I said, right, you little cunts, this is a document from a big nail bomb in the fucking pub and all that shit. Anyway, um, he's had a little kicking. I'll give him a bit of money. This was on a Saturday. Monday, goes the police. Police bears me out. Wait, wait, what? You beat him up and gave him some money to be quiet and then he told the police still? Is that what I just heard? Yes, the GM, everywhere, everywhere looking for me. Anyway, this busy rang me up. I said, look, Sean, he's it, kidnapping, false imprisonment, Damn. criminal with intent. I was like, what? Can I want really to give him a kick him? Well, you've had him picked up the car. You detained him. I said, what am I looking at? My ghost tits up, he went, 15. 14 stars. I was yeah. like, what? what? He went, 14 stars. He said, well, that's, that's what's happening. So I got demanded. I got demanded for that on my own in jail. Yeah, uh, they had loads of shit in fucking jail because I'm a doorman 
I'm not in all the biggest clubs and the biggest bars in Liverpool. Everyone sees a doorman as a bully. They're not all bullies. There's fucking some good lads out there. So I go to jail on my own. Ah, that doorman there from blah, blah, and blah, blah. I've got to start fucking fighting again. I'm like, oh, where the fuck does this end? And you know, your head is busted. Pressure. Tablets don't help, mate. Hmm. And we get to know under the door. I'm with me, me mate, Gary. Me mate's being nicked and the snow comes under my door. This is how naive I was with jail. And I said, ching, ching, see you on the yard. So we've just landed in the jail. We're going down for the instruction. And there's loads sitting there. So I've walked down and go, who the fuck's ching, ching? Who's ching, ching, eh? Put a f- <laughs> Who's ching, ching, eh? Yeah, come on, who is it? Ching, ching means you're getting cut up, ching, ching. Yeah. But I didn't fucking know that. I've, I haven't done jail. Do you know what I mean? I've been an old and fighting the Knicks. I, first time. I'm, you did your first beard at 30? That's crazy, though. Or he was almost 30. But still, you did your first beard late in life. Like. Like. Who the f- and then one of the last ones, he went, Sean, he said, uh, I said, go and find out who Ching Ching is. He went, there's no Ching Ching. I said, the put out the fucking note. He went, no, it means someone's going to cut you up, going out. Where are they going to do it? How do you go and happen to the yard? So me and my mate Gary, he's done a few here, and we've waxed a few. And then jail was sweet. And the reason why jail was sweet is because screws could have other jobs then. Now they can't. You're a screw, you're a screw. I think it's only on 20th kind of year. And I used to have maybe six or seven screws working for me. So when I've gone to jail, what can I help you? What are you doing here? They can't see to help you. And they wouldn't really help you. Oh, to go, okay. look, you need to do this. If you want to okay. have a nice, quiet life in jail, you need to do so this. So when he was free on the outside, he had he had uh, jail, jail employees working for him, like the uh, guards working for him. So he was cool with them once they got inside. Okay. So you need to do that. Comply with this, comply with that, and stop fucking hitting people. Teaching them jail, the jail politics. You go nowhere. You're stuck here. Anyway, I ended up paying the lad, and I got the charges dropped, and I got out. Damn, ain't that bright? Like what? Ain't and that then a... my last one I got, the one I've, I've, I've finished. Yeah, uh, there was still shit going on. <laughs> Being Amanda, uh, I lived in Warrington. I've been nicked. Uh, got put in jail. So Amanda's coming to see me. And there's trouble with a couple of people in jail I was having bother with. And then um, Amanda's coming one day, and they're outside to swallow her acid in a bottle. And that fucking girl's been through everything, mate. How the fuck she hasn't fucked me off, I don't know. Um, Time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but look what you've got. Come on. <laughs> uh, honestly, she's been through thick and thin, mate. I know I'm, I'm going on a little bit forward, but she really has, honest. And I'm not just saying it because she's here. Lads close to me and friends are close to me. And, you know, people going about mental health and suicides. I have a tattoo and I got it. Done in jail. It's Sean, I'm on the TLND. And why I have it there, you can see it. There's four big, the three big scars there. See them? Yeah. I could... That's an L camera work. L camera work. Not even gonna lie. Post edit, they should have made him show it. We wrist. I just had enough. Uh, I was out when I done that. Tried to take and man, it took me the other sorts me out. I used to drive round with this dead and yeah. And I used to have 500 paracetamol, 500 diazis crushed into powder in a, um, in a little, in a tub. And I was being this arm army fella. He said, do you want to do your fucking self in the show? And just knock yourself out and sleep and never wake up. Then got a load of tablets, crushed them like powder, got a glass of warm milk, drink it and take all the tablets. You live your kidneys are shut down, you're gone. And I drove round with this little box this little tub, you know, when you get all your medicine in and all that, you know what? Monday, tub. Tuesday, Wednesday things. Yeah. And the man used to say, what's in that? all, not, 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 what's in that? I always had, I had the next five then. And um, 
where the man that was living, I bought the house right next door to it. And then we started moving in, have a night together, have two nights, three nights, you know. We're, we're in. And he had a load of shit again going on in one of the bars, you know, and you just fucking had enough. I just couldn't get nothing done. These people was like, we'd go and do something. They do it 10 times worse. And I'm like, look, this family that was close to me, it fucking stores it out. It's not me. Go and have a fight with the fucking man. This is not my shit. This is not my trouble. It's been thrown on me and I'm dealing with it. But you fucking started that. No one's funding me buying cars. No one's giving me any money. No one's giving me fuck all. I know you just had enough. I pulled my dead engine out. And my, I pulled my X5 into my little drive. We stopped it and parked outside. And she's I'm going, where are you? And I'm talking to her low as the winter. Do you remember this? And um, I'm talking to her. In the next seven days, if our traders don't get you an 80... Dang, that's the first commercial in one hour. <laughs> salute. Can't say I'm going to do the same, but salute. <laughs> I went, I, I, I just, I thought, I can't take that. I've got no more, more milk in. And we laugh about it now. Got no more, more milk in the car. I'm going to go out and get a bottle. I thought, you know what, I fucking had enough. So I rung to me little Ava. Got me gun out. Little two. I went, fuck it. I said, what? I said babe, I, I, just, I just can't do it no more. She said, what's up? She went, you're outside, are you? I went, no, no. I went, look, I've had enough. I love you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just tell everyone, look, I'm sorry. I, just, I, just, I shouldn't have got you involved. And, and, uh, I've been better for fucking three or four years then. <laughs> and as she come down, I've got the gun. But she dragged it and put it on the roof in my car. How hard is it when you've got a fearsome reputation, people do look up to you, you've got a missus who loves you, but then the pressure of that life is making you then your family become targets and then you don't even want to be here on this planet as a father as well. Like, how hard is it when it all bulked yes, up? Yes, that, that, that. Was... This, that, 48 minutes, 19 seconds is the second question that, that James has asked. The first question was, tell us a little about how your life and how you got here. The answer to that went for 48 minutes. This, this is the second question he's asked. Yo, that's lit. Who? That's like the straw that broke the camel's back, or you know, whatever you want to call it. And I broke down, man has got me in the house, babe, what are you doing? What's this? Been them tablets, you need help. I went and seen a proper psychiatrist to put me on the proper medication. Um, and I just thought, you selfish you bastard, not to myself. I'm going to fucking end myself. What about me kids? What about me bed? There's a man there been with me for three or four years, looks after me, target her, burning her house, ramming her car, and say, go and fucking swill her asses. And I'm just going to rent myself like a shit house. And she's stuck. Good, because a good way. I'm glad you noticed that that's the coward way out. Coward way out. Face the problems that you help create. You know, even though it wasn't on purpose that you created them. God damn, hold on. Put all the baggage. Nah. And I just went, you know what? Just 
fuck the shit. Let them deal with the shit and just get on with your life. Then I got a gym in Warrington. I settled down a bit. Then I got me big deal for a gun and bullets in the house that these people that was close to me fucking blew me up. And everybody knows this, but I'm saying it now. You just want to hear it off me. Every, every fucking knows, James. When the police nick you, one of my doormen, in, I've got a big night in the arena. It's all documented. And one of my mates over on the Whittle, it's his beards. Was it 40 to something, man? He said, Sean, do you fancy going out? Well, I didn't go out, James. I went, eh, yeah, yeah, go on, yeah, I'll, I'll check my doors, I'll go round, check all my doors. And he's all right, pay all my doors over Monday, all the guards of a Tuesday. I'm going round. <clears throat> and um, I'm in this bar in the arena. It's got an upstairs, all glass, and it's concert square. And next one, she's just a fucking swarm of busies. And uh, the licensee comes down and looked, there's a lot of the police here, do you, do you want to see her? I went, well, Someone's come in, she went, no, just, there's a lot of police. It's me, helicopter, arm response. I went, for what? She went, Sean, I don't know. For the pipe, they come in good, she went. Like I don't know if you've been to Liverpool, Concert Square is like the main place to go. I had that door. So anyway, they've nicked one of me doormen. Little Joe, they've nicked him. So I've I've come running down. And I've gone, what, what the fuck, what? Just before the police come, my lad's been caught with about 60 or 70 tablets, yeah? Uh. And all the tablets, like, oh, what have you got, Sean? So, I'm not working. I didn't do those down. I've got enough to home, and I went around, checked them on. You're all right, get your tie on, get off your phone, get off this, get off that. Me and the man has gone out with this couple. Um, and the lads have got all these tablets, so you're supposed to ring the police, get them nicked. I'm not getting no one nicked. And I put that on, I've never had no kid nicked for any fucking drugs. Don't abide by it, don't like what they do. But look, it's what they do. So what we do, take them to the exits and go, look, get the tablets, get the tablets. The licensees are going to ring the police and you're going to get nicked. Oh, but see that fire exit? The door are going to walk up there and you're going to boot that door and fuck off. The door are not going to chase you. So we always let them out. They always got away. So anyway, the licence are coming, the kids got off. The lad sat away upstairs and went, Sean, you got any galleys? I went, come on, mate, fully went, come on, it's my birthday, I'm 40, blah, blah, blah. I went, John, kiss one of them, kiss one of them. And I've got a tablet, mate, and stuck it in my shirt. There, I went, I'll be down in a minute. Gone upstairs to me, mate, all the police are there, they want you, they want you. I've come down, believe you've got a firearm on you. And I went, oh, fuck off. I'm in the middle of a fucking bar with a couple of thousand people in the old. I've really want to say, so they say to me, well, lit me up like a fucking Tisman tree. The nick of one of my door, I'm kicking off. And he says to me, this one sergeant, flat cap, he went, You searched him. I went, I've fucking been searched. Then the two licenses and police that are coming over, which I'll tell you about them cunts, they're coming over and I've gone, Lads, come on, fucking hell, what's going on here? I've had me searched. And it's, a, it's all glass. And he's gone, you ain't going anywhere. I say it to him again. And he's put his hand on me. He went, what's that? I said, what's what? So he's gone like that. I went, fuck all he went, no, what's that? And it must have been a nullity little thing. Yeah, go on, man. A Gary, mate. A fucking tablet. One tablet. And I went, listen, there's just been 70 days on the floor. The lads bolted the door and picked them up. It's, it's, ended in me, it's ended in me pocket. That's all we need is to say to your house. That's all they me. needed for you, buddy. So James, the they was looking for a reason. You know how that go in the UK. They find one little thing on you. Your house is searched. Fucking gun. The gun I had, I lent it to someone. I didn't think it was in my house. This is the gospel truth. I didn't think this gun was in my house, right? So I bought this house next to a man then. Got all new wooden floor fit, a new back kitchen. Lent this gun to this kids, what people do in Liverpool, loaned them this gun. And now I remember he went, Sean, I, I didn't need you, just had to scare someone. Put it back. The key's under the pot. He must have put the gun back. 
I've just forgot because I've got that much shit going on. Busy man, just what we need today, dear house. But no one knows I've got this house, James. No one knew. But the people I was close to knew I'd had this house. Because when you, you get your contacts to the bank, it's gone to an old address I had. Mm. And these fuckers knew this. Mm. I mean, the house. Yeah, go on. Not near, is they? As far as I know, it's not near. In my proper house, they went to the fucking house where I was staying and found a gun. So these bastards fucking blew me up and every fucking Trick, house. Don't you? And I'm saying it for the first time. So they come in about half four in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Man is kicking off. <laughs> trying to nick a man they could nick what he's all, man. She's screaming because they're nicking me. And my bird's a lawyer, I know all your birds are lawyer, man. She, del- she burns the phone out in the custody suite. They come and got me three times, but look. So when you speak to your wife and you will you please tell her, she's blocking the line. <laughs> she's blocking the line. <laughs> but obviously, I think we had now, so they come in and went, Sean, got your guns here. Yeah. Yeah. But it's too hard, he went, man. He went, me slits ago, I went, no, I'm I thought, I want to go to jail. I can't do this on the street no more. I'm going to end up killing someone. And these people that was dead close to me, I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to end up killing one of them. And I've been around for 25, 30 fucking years. These bastards fucking set me up, and every fucking knows this. And I went, you know what the man? Yeah, says, man. Somebody set you up for a lighter sentence. They, don't, they, they, they got in that courtroom. Listen, I don't really want to. I want. I will. I don't really want you. Let's go. I went. Look, the man. What are you doing with them? I went, what do you think I'm fucking doing with them? I bought them to protect myself. Not to cause fear and danger. I bought them to protect myself. If you haven't realised, people are trying to fucking shoot me and bear me out. So what am I going to do? Let's have a fight. Come on, fucking hell. So uh, they nicked me. I got six years, eight months. I got 30% off. It was five years, four or something. Did you plead to it? Did you plead to it? I just pleaded the guilty yeah. that way. And he went, do you want bail? I went, no. I thought, fuck it, get it done. Get it done. So they nicked me on the Saturday. Get to Walton on the Monday, the court Monday, straight to Walton Jail. <clears throat> Couple of me mates, is it? Hold on, sorry. Hold on, sorry. Hold on, sorry. Hold on, sorry. Yo! And um, I'm in jail. All these other people that was close to me are fucking made up. I'm in jail. Yeah, fucking in jail. No bed prick and all that. They couldn't fucking fight sleep. I fought their wars. I made their name. Anyway, I'm in jail. So I knew a couple of screws. And then the security comes up. He goes, yeah, Sean, when you send a letter into jail, they're all checked. When you send one... Oh, what's, what's it called when you send it where you've got to open it? Special, special delivery. So the screws, I don't know what if you done, Jay. They come to your door on special delivery. You've got to open it in front of them and see what it is. So you better send your pictures in a bikini and all like that. The screws up. Open your letters, Smitty. Well, just your bed, yeah, go on. You put them on your wall. So the screw said, you look, you're going to get a pair of saying he sent up. And the dogs being on them. And there's a need uh, smacking it. But well, I don't fucking do drugs. Don't sell that. He went, look, who's it come from? He went, there's no sender on it. It's from an address. I went, I have an ordinal tailings. I haven't even got a fucking clothes up yet. I've only been in about eight, nine weeks. I went, I haven't got fuck all. He went, don't accept the parcel. Once you accept that parcel, whether you know about it or not, and you open it, 
you all get next. I'm um, there anyway. You get next. Um, that's that's a W. That's W informant information. So I refused it. Then she goes to you and see me. I don't know who the fuck is that. I have not I haven't put an app in for trainees. I don't know anyone. Then they done it. It was the Christmas before they got nicked, weren't it? And when they've done it before the Christmas got nicked, you send cards and you have the big stamps, don't you? They put fucking element in that to get me nicked in jail. These was people I've been around for near 30 fucking years, mate. Why are they doing it? Right. Because I was a nuisance to them. Because they started all this trouble with me and I fell out with them, they couldn't handle their shit. They wanted me to carry on with their beef. Crack on with it. Nothing to do with me. He's all got money. He's all on this and that. Go and fucking do it. He's left me with nothing. Nothing. No one gives me money to buy cars. Guns. Pay. They used you. They used the muscle. They got what they wanted out of you and they wanted you to be out the way forever. After that. I need the lads for sitting up people's houses, looking after them. I need some scores outside my house. I'm putting lads outside all the fucking houses. They're not paying them. I am in my company. And I, th I couldn't believe it. I thought, who would send me smacking? It was them. They got... When a police officer says to you, when I'm getting nicked, they finished when they turn it off. Fully surprised there, Sean, you put a guilty. I went to said, you know what? She was a busy... She was an armed response busy and she went, uh, detective. And uh, she went, I'm very shocked. I said, you know what, girl, I've fucking had enough. I said, well, I said, I've just had enough of the drama and the shit and all the family shit. I can't be asked with it. I need a break. I said, if I don't, I'll end up getting life off. I'll end up killing someone or killing a couple of people or I'll end up getting killed myself. I said, you know, when you just had enough, I yeah. thought, fuck it. I wanted to go, I was there, I wanted to go to jail. So she went, well, I just want to tell you something, Sean, off the record. Uh, the people that you're on about are all standing up a certain bar, all drinking cups of tea. And we've had 27 missed calls tonight to say you're carrying a firearm. I said, so what are you saying? Down to them, she went, well, off the record, yeah. They blew me up. No. These people have been round, looked after them, kept their fucking name up here fought all their battles they blew me up and everyone was telling me in jail they i was going nah, i know i fell out with that he went I'm, I'm telling you and it did then the enemies they had because my mates in jail was telling me what had happened to them we got nicked i got nicked with a gun nick i went what that was your blah blah i was what and when he was telling me oh, fucking hell yeah it was but i was oblivious i just wanted to sort this trouble because all this trouble was going on. You know, you'd have your big king go, yeah, they've done this to the bar, they've done that to you. Oh, so yeah. I just, I just did. I was in that mindset of, you're bringing trouble, you fight fear with fear. And that's what I was doing. And a lot of me lads got hurt, I got hurt. Mentally, I was fucked. I was fucked for, <laughs> fucked for years. And, and, you know, even driving up here today, I had the chief being in tears. I was getting emotional because when I was in jail, I listened to a guy called Ray Lamontage or Ray Lamontage. Oh, yeah. Trouble. Trouble. Oh, mate. Great tune. What an album. Oh, well, great what album. an album. Sad, isn't it? Oh, it's mate. about the women being there. And yeah. Stuff. yeah. Troubles. And, yeah. The, and I'm, I'm singing it to a man that's coming up this morning. And she got him. I had a little tears. She got emotional. Because when I was in jail, he was a life for there playing the guitar. And he's playing his fucking guitar. And I'm next door in this <laughs> And you don't know who's yelling out the window. It was on this shitty beam and I'm going, I don't have that fucking guitar off yet. I'm fucking putting it over your head, you cheeky cunt. It's like half ten a night, but I think it was a bit early. What was like mad? <laughs> when I got to this, it was like a bit quiet. And he's playing these tunes. So when I've gone in, I went, listen, mate, you know you. you I'm finishing off for 24 years, man. I don't give a fuck what you've been. I'm finishing off my sleep. I've got, I I get up at half four, sailing me pants. I was mad sailing, Jay. Um... I said, I don't fucking kill you. What anyway? What are you playing? I'm playing this. Like, who the fuck's Ray Lamontagne? I'm And he had a little iPod, a little iPod. Yeah, uh, because he'd done something to his neck, and he had this little iPod thing. And he went, listen to him. And I listened to that album, James Trouble. Fucking hell, mate. Loved it. Yeah. Got me through me jail. Honest. Got me through me jail. That album. 
I could relate to the word trouble, you know, he's worrying. Mm -hmm. And uh, your, your bird saves you. And I'm singing this to her, as well. she knows the songs, she went, I've never heard them. And she come up on the visit, I was telling her, she went, oh, I can't get into <laughs> And now, we haven't heard it for ages, and obviously I'm up here because it's my anniversary. I didn't know it was when you, you booked it. Happy um, anniversary, Gango. And it was a bit emotional coming up, to be honest. It was, it was good, it was good. So how does that make you feel then? You're fighting a war that's not even yours. You're fighting for people who you thought had your back. And then it turns out they've then set you up where you're then becoming suicidal. Your message is getting put under pressure. How much do you feel let down then, or angry, or how do you feel towards mate, it all? Mate, you know what? There's no loyalty in the life of crime no, anyway. You, no. you've learned. Yeah, there's no honour among thieves, ever. <laughs> ever. So all of that, uh, no snitching, no doing this, no doing that, bro, save it. <laughs> I get it, but at the same time, ain't no honour among thieves, never. No, 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 no there isn't. But how does it make you feel to be staunch and try to do you the right thing but then it's all came crumbling down where you've just been used you, you know what i went guilty get in the police they looked at my ankle where'd you get them i bought them on this i went to a car boot sale i got told to some fella he had army stuff and he got me them or well, i met some fella in the van i just told him a lot of shit uh, and then when she told me that that these people are very close to me the dad loads of phone calls, they're all sitting there drinking tea, like fucking big Charlie potatoes. Could she have been saying that though, just to fuck with no, your head? No, I knew her mate, she was arm response. She pulled me a lot of times and she used to say to me, what are you doing? You got a family now, oh, what are you doing? I'm busy saying to me, what are you doing? This is police telling me while the trouble's going on. It's not your beef, get them to sort it. But I just took her by the reins. Anyway, when she told me that, and then and I'm in jail, I'm, I'm, I've come out. As I'm in jail, I thought, you know what? If, if I would have got bail, my solicitor said, look, we'll apply for bail. You've got big businesses. Uh, it was my first prison sentence. I've been demanded three times. That was my first prison sentence. It's your first sentence. Which age were you? When I went in, um, 38, was it, man? 40. So it took me. 40 years old, your first prison sentence. Okay. The first time you was just in the holding cell, you got out. This is your first prison sentence. sentence. So I was down as a businessman, being locked, remanded a good few times. Uh, but the police here is having a small army behind you. Not a big door for him that's protecting the fucking city and all the young kids that are going out there, stopping them selling fucking pills and everything in your club. Um, and I was 40. and. If she would have told me that and I would have got bail, I would have went and killed them. My solicitor said to me, Lionel, he went, look, we'll apply for bail for London. We'll get your bail. Let's look at the stats. I know it's good. It's very hard to get it, but you've got to sort all your business out. You've got your wife and all that. We need to, there's a lot to sort out of you. I'll apply for bail. I went, don't. She said, Sean, we'll, look, we've got a good chance again. You're not going to leave the country. You're not an absconder. It's your first sentence. But obviously the police knew me very well. He said, let's try it. And I, I wanted to, for Amanda's sake, you know, to sort things out with Amanda and all that, and the baby. And I said, no. I said, why? I'd kill them, mate. I would have killed them. Who was it, Sean, being in there? Were you ever worried for your wife's safety on you are inside and Every do day, fuck mate. Every fucking day. I've never shoved nothing up my ass. I got used to shoving them. <laughs> oh. Mate, your ass is for exit, not for entry. Isn't it? What's your ass for? Some exit stuff out your body, not for entry. Uh. So I've gone into jail. I've needed a phone, just load of jail stuff. Well, we can probably do it another time. And you know these the old Nokias? I don't know, they're about that big ass. Yeah. I get the phone off this lad. Get us a phone. He was like four and we quit that. So he said to me, charge it. So he gave me the cable with the, the first night, mate. I'm on him. Um, I think Kate Wing was the demand wing then when I've gone in. I was only on the demand wing for four days because I've gone guilty so I can go into general population. So I didn't want to get demanded, get put him with all the scrotes and the baguettes and the tabby bashes. If you, if you go guilty, they'll put you in general population. Well, he had a few mates in them. 
but I was there for two or three years. Anyway, this lad's give me this phone. So I just thought, fucking plug her in. No one with your kettle. I plugged her in and blew the land and <laughs> fucking going, who had the fucking phone? And I'm like, fucking hell. We to, what, what to do with the phone? Well, mine's gone. And they're like, we're just being banged up. There was still screws on. He went, Sean, don't fucking come here, man. What, what, what? He, had, he went, I'm oh, fucking on my phone, man. I don't know this kid. I've only been in three nights. I'm going to take the fucking phone, lad. He went, you throw it out the window, but you fucking can't, can you? You've got the mess on it. Throw it down the toilet. He went, no, I need the phone. He went, I'll be fucked. You know what to do. Start trying to avoid this. He said, plug it. I went, you're plugging no fucking for you mess. And he went, but he had loads of businesses. I had like, 27 doors, clubs, sites, I had loads of bad money. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. How'd you plug a phone? He went, mate, here's how you plug a phone. Plastic bag, like a wash bag, with a tissue, <laughs> get your phone, put loads of shower gel on it, and up it goes. I went, nah, go on then. He went, no, no, no. It's going up your ass. I went, not going up my ass, mate. <laughs> so he was listening. He, got, he went, look, I'll show you. So he got it all ready. He went, oh, mate, I'm not bad. He went, I said, go on then, let's see. He went, oh, no, that's for you, that. I went, mate, I ain't fucking plugging that. He went, get some. Mate, I've some saw my ass up. <laughs> and I thought, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I can hear the screws. Who's blue, do lucky? And they're opening doors. They're all going, screws are on the Germans. And mate, I've got it. I'm amazed I can't get it up. I went, fuck it. And then I veered the door on the door here. And I'm just sat down. Fucking hell. You said all it? Yo. Hey, yo. Mate, anyone who says it's easy, it's not. It's fucking hard work. How them fucking <laughs> porn stars do, mate? You need a fucking medal, yeah, believe the, me. The one who says it's easy, mate. they've done it far too many times, mate. 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 <laughs> yo. Hey, you know what? You know what? It become the norm. <laughs> it become all of me. <laughs> I could have the, I'd have the bag ready, the tissue would be in the bag, my phone would be there, I'd have my sim in my fucking bellend. <laughs> I haven't had my bellend cut, so I've still got my foreskin, I'd have my dinghy there, I'd have the phone I'd use, I'd put it there ready, I went to bed with fucking shower gel on my ass in case they come in and I could get that up in. What? <laughs> hey, you went to jail with your boot. I mean, you went to sleep with your booty pre lubed. It's crazy. That's crazy, Sean. I get it. You got to do what you got to do, but that is not making it any less crazy to hear. Look at you. <laughs> One, two, three, four, go. Just got it up. The things you do for love, so, Sean, and I. It's all <laughs> it. <laughs> and you know what? We laugh now. It weren't about the money. Uh, I had to speak to me, bed. I ain't gonna lie. I would have kept that story to myself. That would have went to the grave with me. Because yeah. she's all he had, mate. I had me mates. He had Walshy. I had Alex. I had me mates. I met in jail. He was still one of my best mates now, Mikey. Great guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had all my old family, my brothers, my mum and all that. But how ironic sticks. Me first, I get in jail, and a man who's coming on a visit and see me on his own, and, you know, this, that, I'll be all right. And then the, the second visit, my dad come. And when your dad walks in, he goes, oh, lads, I'm fucking made up, you're here. I went, what? Do you fucking me? He went, lads, he was, he went, what's going on? He was going to fucking kill someone or be killed. I said, Dad, them cunts, and I told the man that I told him what had happened. He said, Do what? He said, Well, you're better off than here. I said, Oh, thanks. Yeah. He yeah, ain't lying. And uh, you know what? Jail was the only place I could go to sleep and felt safe. Peacefully, yeah. Sad but I'm not. Felt safe. Sad but I'm not. Now, cameras in me out. When you got real ops and you got real people out to get you, that's the truth. Fire extinguishers, it's fucking mental. I live in a separate room from a man there. I don't have her in my room. Don't have me the kids in the room. I have everything by plant code there. Mate, I don't even have a boss car now. The cheeky bastard took all the wheels off my car last year and just left the, you know, your thingy nuts. Yeah, the boats. That one, yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm in the car, I'm going up to the... 
Nu. Where's the where, where wings left? Poor mate, you dead. I'm going in the car. I'm driving. I'm like, this is my fucking mate. This I pulled over. Leicester. Leicester. Go and see me. Our uh, mate who died. Wings. God bless him. Uh, and I'm driving up to Leicester. And my car starts to fucking shake. No nuts on it. Just them safety won't know you think you're locking nuts. Damn. What the? F so I'm in the eight, rang the mountain, he went, you can't drive down. I said, why? He went, I think your wheels have come off. I said, what do, you, what do I need? He went, you need 16 fucking nuts. I said, I've got two nuts in the fucking car that'll come with me on this job, you know what I mean? He went, no, your nuts are gone. The bean had took the nuts off my car. Sick, all of them. I have an hose pipe in my garden that will reach my car, Katie Bernie. Even now, I don't have trouble now. These lads that had all the trouble, I've spoke to half of them. I don't have a problem. I don't have James. Hold on. Alright, hold on. Half time. Hold on. Hmm, <sighs> starting to feel a tingle on my lip. I don't give a fuck. I don't know what that was, huh? We're gonna leave that right there, buddy. <laughs> no, I'm not editing it out. Really don't. They understand that we're my beef. And I'm like, all oh, that fucking shit you put me fucking beard through. A man that's coming in the jail and I moved her twice. She lived in Iton first, then in Warrington. I had three fucking hours, I owned a one and since she was living, swapping, swapping. Can't get you, we'll get your bird. I'll be a fucking man and get me these have guns. What are you going after me bird for? I'm here in jail. What's the worst thing about being in prison, Sean? Well, one, obviously not seeing your loved ones, you don't take yourself. Not seeing your loved one. Ah, right, yo, that's part one, man. I'll be back for the other hour and a half. <laughs> I'm not going to react with anything with something on my lip. See, hello, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification. It's just cream. Relax. <laughs>
I don't want no pimples. It's toothpaste. I'm gone.